The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome back to another show from Rovers Chat as we unpick what is next for Blackburn Rovers as it's part of our Replacing Mowbray series of streams and other videos that we've got for you. Big decision for Rovers coming on uh, along, isn't it? So um, we had the live stream on Monday night where Glenn, Alex and Elliot from Lanx Live went into some detail on some of the candidates, very much a Rovers fan perspective on that one. But there are plenty of ex-championship names and current F uh, EFL managers on that list. And we can't ask every club, but we've got absolutely the next best thing. And that is one half of the brilliant second tier podcast. Uh, is it the better half, Justin Peach? I don't know. How are you, Justin? I'd definitely say it's the better half. But yeah, I'm, I'm very good. Thank you. I'm with a much better Ryan as well, in my opinion. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a double whammy there. So uh, Ryan Dilks has been well and truly told by you and I there. And uh, <laughs> Rovers fans, if you have not subscribed to the channel, of course, please hit that subscribe button. Please give this video a like for us and turn on all notifications using that bell icon. And we want plenty of interaction. So even though this is a pre-recorded show, get your comments into that comments box. We just want to really sum up the thoughts of the Rovers fan base at the moment in what is a really, really critical decision for Rovers. So Justin, um, let's get stuck into this then. So I have to start first and foremost, um, you know, with second tier's view on Rovers and the season overall. I think Ryan in particular was pretty strong in his view that Rovers wouldn't make the playoffs. I think I did see you hanging on to Rovers for, uh, support for a bit longer. So you get the kudos in the fans. But what's your view on the season overall for Rovers? And do you think Tony Mowbray and Rovers have ultimately underachieved from from where we were? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think I, I, I've been impressed with Blackburn this season. I think we spoke to you at the start of the season, actually, and got your views on how Blackburn were going to do. And there wasn't a lot of expectation or promise there so you can say that actually and Matt Blackburn might have overachieved to some extent obviously as I'm Armstrong leaving as well you're wondering where the goals are going to come from but then you've got the likes of Ben Barrett Diaz stepping up um and then yeah the season the season started to promise and, and or promise to deliver quite a lot um and then it obviously get to, you get to Christmas or after New Year and it starts to downturn a little bit but I think if you take that out of out of the um out of the running here. I think Blackburn have had a good season. I think finishing between sort of in and around, well, he could finish up to eighth. I don't think it's a bad season. Um, it's probably where Blackburn should have finished last season, in my opinion. Um, so I do think it's a sign of progress, but at the same time, with the with the players that are leaving, that are potentially leaving, as you say, it's, it's a really critical point for Blackburn. But I think overall, it's not a bad season. It could have done, it could have delivered a lot more with where Blackburn were. Um, but at the same time, I think there were decisions that, the, the wrong decisions that that came across Tony Mowbray in, in, in January, particularly with some of the recruitment. Whilst it was good, some some key holes weren't weren't filled. Um, and with and with Mowbray, probably is similar to QPR, probably is the right time to to move on because this is a massive turning point for, for Blackburn. Yeah, and obviously Rovers fans have known for a long time that the contract is up at the end of the season and certainly we've heard nothing from you know the local press or anything that suggests that the contract was ever going to be signed and Tony Mowbray has been quite coy about it until really the last couple of weeks where he's just said, I'm going. Are you surprised he's going or given what you just said there, it feels like the right time? It's a, yeah, there's, there's so many similarities with QPR. It's quite strange because again, a season that could have delivered quite a lot um, ultimately fell away. Managers are out of contract. A little bit of a turnover in players as well. Um, so no, I don't. Th I, I'm not surprised. I'm I'm sad because I think Tony Mowbray is a great guy. Um, I think where he's taken Blackburn because Blackburn could have been in free fall. Um, the the appointment record under Venkis is, is is really <laughs> really <laughs> quite sketchy. Um, yeah. And Tony Mowbray um, was probably their best appointment even though they took over when they were in the Premier League. It's really strange saying that, but Tony Mowbray, the best appointment. He's turned the club around. He's improved players. He's brought in a lot of money to the club as well with the players that have been sold in the past. 
Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's the right time. As I say, it's a new chapter for Blackburn, but it has to be the right appointment because I think Blackburn are in a really good position to build on what they've done, what they've built, or what Tony Mowbray's built over the last three or four years. Mm. And just on that note, obviously we're losing a really experienced manager, someone who's been around a long time. Likely that a number of players are going to go in the summer as well. Joe Rothwell and Ryan Nyambi certainly look like they're going to go. Maybe a question mark over Daryl Enahan, Brereton Diaz, we might well sell as well. And then there's others like Jacob Davenport, you know, squad players. So, you know, I just want to get your opinion on how we're shaping up in comparison to other clubs in the championship, because I have seen a really long list of players out of contract in in the summer across the championship. So do Rovers kind of feel similar to, to where we are, to where a lot of other clubs are? Potentially, um, <clears throat> although I think Blackburn are probably in a slightly better position because they have good assets in the likes of Ben Brereton Diaz. If, if if they do need to be sold, then money can be brought in to, um, to try and reinvest. I know that wasn't the, the, the same factor with Adam Armstrong, but hopefully that would be the case this season um, because, as you say, Ben Brereton Diaz is likely to be sold in as well as that. I don't think there's any guarantees that he's going to have He's going to be able to replicate his form next season. So I think it would be the right time to cash in on him. Obviously, with other first team members or first team members of the squad leaving, it is a blow, but I think they are replaceable. I'm I'm in that boat where I don't think any player is irreplaceable, unless there's mm-hmm. someone like Mitrovic where they're scoring 43 goals a season. I do think players are replaceable, especially in the championship and especially going into the summer, where, as you mentioned, there are quite a lot of free agents bouncing around and there'll be players going into last year. The contracts that clubs will try and move on as well. So I think, as I say, I think Blackburn are in, actually in a, a better position, even though they might be losing some key members. They're in a much stronger position than a lot of squads um, in the in the, in the the yeah in the championship. As I say, West Brom, they, they need a lot of surgery um, to get to where they need to be. In Millwall, they're going to be in a position where they need to add to their squad as well. Jed Wallace will be leaving, for example. Mm. So actually, I think Blackburn could be primed for a, a good chance to, to to build again and go again. Um, it's just about getting the right people in place. That is absolutely what Rovers fans wanted to hear, Justin. <laughs> so on that positive note, we'll move on to the managers and who is going to be the man that's uh, that's obviously going to lead all of this. So um, Skybet, we've checked today um, at the, the time of recording this, which is on Wednesday, the 4th of May. So that is the current... Um, it's not the full top 10. We've taken a couple of names out just to help us with our discussion. But Daniel Farker in there at two to one at the moment with Skybet. Gareth Ainsworth at five to two. Damian Johnson, five to one. And then Philip Koku, six to one. That is the top four. There are other names bouncing around. Michael Appleton, 10 to one. Jason Wilcox, 12 to one. Liam Manning, 12 to one. And Roy Keane, 12 to one. But Rob Edwards, obviously, in there at, at 12 to one as well. So that is the current state of play with the top six or seven candidates or so. Um, we're going to focus the discussion, Justin, on these current market leaders and then a few more as well. And I'm just going to ultimately just get your view on whether you think they're a good fit for Rovers and, and also what you might have picked up just from guests that you've had on the second tier pod, you know, particularly if they're, you know, managers that have managed mm. in the championship before. So really keen to get your insight on this. Um, so the first one we're going to focus on is Daniel Farker. Uh, so let's bring this up and shout out to Joe Harvey with these amazing graphics again. Just uh, you can tell that I've not touched them. Um, so Daniel Farker, absolutely the fans' favourite choice at this point in time. I've seen loads of social media tweets and, and other bits and bobs. Lots of excitement if we could ultimately pull this managerial appointment off. Obviously, a slice of luck, if we can call it luck, given the current circumstances in Russia and Ukraine. But... The fact he's obviously recently left a job in in Russia maybe presents an opportunity for Rovers. So um, obviously, I think we know the credentials of Farker at, at Championship level. Justin, yeah. what's the stuff that you've picked up from Norwich fans? You know, when they've been in the Championship, and I'm particularly interested in that season when they got relegated from the Prem and back up um, mm. into the Premiership at, at the first time because that could have been a difficult spell for him. Yeah, he's he's obviously a very well liked coach. Um, I think when he took over Norwich, um, there was a lot of a lot of question marks when he went in. Obviously, I think they finished sixteenth in his first season, um, but there were building blocks being put in place um, with him and Stuart Webber. Um, and I think that's a really key thing to to how he functioned at Norwich City. Is 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 does he have the right people upstairs around him? Um, because at Norwich, him and Stuart Webber, they spearheaded 
they spearheaded the promotion. Um, they got everything in line for for the pr- promotion last season. Obviously, after relegation, convinced Buendia to stay, which for me, I think, is the difference between them finishing as a champion, uh, championship winning team, to finishing the playoffs. You've seen how much they've struggled this season to create chances. Buendia was the the icing on the cake. So again, there's that factor as well. But yeah, incredibly popular manager, and I think. Him coming into Blackburn now would be quite um, quite almost a perfect fit because he's coming into a team that is in a transition that needs a coach that can find the balance that Mowbray couldn't balance. I think Mowbray said this season that they tried to go from a possession-based team last season to a direct team this season. Daniel Fark is the perfect mix between both. Um, And I, I really do think it would be a perfect fit and he will obviously find that balance that Mowbray couldn't and ultimately get more out of the squad. Um, and as as I, as I was saying, highly popular of Norwich fans, and and between Ryan and I on the second tier, we put him in the sort of top five category of of best championship managers ever because what he's done with Norwich City in 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 such a short space of time. Hmm. Just a little word of caution on what you said. I think for Rovers fans, you obviously mentioned the role of Stuart Weber. <clears throat> I think it's well documented that. Maybe off the pitch, Rovers don't have the best structure compared to other championship clubs. Um, John Park, who Tony Mowbray brought in actually as head of recruitment at Rovers, will be leaving Rovers as well at the end of the season. So is that crucial for you that if it's Rovers who replace John Park themselves or Daniel Farker who recommends someone, Farker needs that type of figure in the club? Absolutely, I think if you look at the the managerial candidates on the <clears throat> on the odds the on the odds list, there are managers that that can come in and, and and do the job. They can run the club like Gareth Ainsworth, where the likes of Philip Cocky and Daniel Farker need people around them upstairs to to get the best out of them, um, because they can they ultimately have the conversations with the managers um, and they go and recruit the players to come in and 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 do the job that they need to do. Norwich's recruitment was very specific. You look at Buendia and his role, he played on the right hand side. He wasn't a number 10, he played on the right hand side of the um that midfield three. Um and Team Rupuki used to make really direct runs in between the defenders. There's never a central figure. And that was down to um identifying the type of players that can play that role and then Farker coaching into them. So it was very, very specific in what they did and how they recruited. I don't think Daniel Farker could come in and do that himself. I think he needs people around him to to help help with that. Just to go on record, first and foremost in this, Daniel Farker would be my choice of manager. <laughs> I think it, it would be a great appointment for us if we could do it early and show intent. I would love it. I think it would shift season tickets. I think it would really ignite the fans. But I am just hearing what you're saying, you know, about that head of recruitment mm. and, and that type of role that we need at the club. And maybe that's just the air of caution that we should have as Rovers fans. If we don't have that structure or there isn't anyone in that role. Maybe, you know, we just need to think about that as Rovers fans. But he's my number one choice. Um, just quick question, Justin, you know, maybe with the proviso about that off-field figure, good fit for Rovers or not? I think Farker is, as I was saying. The, the football Mowbray tried to play, he couldn't find that balance between direct and possession. He had to go one or the other, whereas uh, Farker's ex- exactly um, the, the hybrid model that I think this Blackburn team needs. Um, so, yeah, I think he would be a perfect fit and exactly the type of person to come in and spearhead brings youngsters through, improves players um, and, and gives uh, creates high sell on uh, value for them. So, yeah, absolutely perfect for Blackburn. Well, let us know what you think in the comments box, Rovers fans, about Daniel Farker. You know, do you share my concern about not having that figurehead in the club or are you just trusting Daniel Farker to come in and make an impact? Let us know what you think in the comments box. So, Justin, let's move on to the second manager then, who is high up um, the odds list. And that is Gareth Ainsworth. Um, Obviously, very well documented uh, local lad, supports Rovers, was in the Rovers youth team. Um, You know, so Gareth Ainsworth is probably going to get something that a lot of managers won't. And that is time. Um, I think Rovers fans would ultimately want Gareth Ainsworth to succeed and give him time to succeed unless he is a complete failure like someone like Henningberg was when we were first relegated into the championship. And he, of course, is a Rovers legend. So the thing about Gareth, uh, Gareth Ainsworth for me, um, Justin, I have been quite critical of Tony Mowbray this season in what I would perceive as a lack of charisma. Um, so the game that really annoyed me was actually when we came from behind against Derby at home. And that, for the fans, was just an amazing comeback victory that we thought was going to ignite the season. Uh, it didn't, obviously. But 
Tony Mowbray's post-match conference was just in keeping with all the others where there's a certain tone and a certain level to it. Gareth Ainsworth, for me, would come in with that charisma, that fire in his belly. He'd want to do well because he supports Rovers. So what have you heard from Wickham fans and his style of management? Obviously, they've had to overcompete, so to speak, with their squad at League One level in particular. Mm -hmm. So what have you heard from Wickham fans on that? He's a he's a legend, isn't he? Um, he's he's a legend at Wickham because of what he's 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 brought to the club, what he's done with the club. I think he's been a legend pretty much wherever he's been because he's, he's very he's he's, he's enamoured by QPR fans as well for his playing days, um, and he's he's a coach that I respect massively, and he he fits the Wickham brand perfectly, where it's a small community club. Um, and he almost helps run the club. I think it'll be a very easy appointment for the Blackburn owners to make because they don't need to get too much right off the pitch because Gareth Ainsworth, um, his impact on that club stretches far beyond what they do what they do on the pitch. Um, I think he sorts the housing for, for, for the groups of players. I remember watching something on the BBC. Um, I think it was Jack Grimmer was housing with another few players, and he sets the personalities right. He, he identifies the players who can come in and he gets the best out. Look at Sam Vokes this season. He's been in the doldrums for three or four years, had numerous injuries, um, but he's got double figures out of him. And he's been one of League One's best strikers. Now, it's always going to be the case because Sam Vokes is a very talented player, but he's, he's dragged him up and he's still got Adebayo uh, Akinfoma in his team. He just brings in the right people, creates the right atmosphere and gets the fans behind the club as well. Wickham should have been down and out last season, but they took... They, they took it to the final day. Um, and that's partly down to Gareth Ainsley from what he got out of that really limited team. Gareth McCleary, um, Jordan Abita, there are players there that should have been winding down, but they found a new lease of life down at Wickham and that's down to, to, to Gareth Ainsworth. The thing I'm detecting in the Rovers fan base, um, maybe this isn't the right word, but I'll say it. Maybe it's a bit of snobbery or a bit, not yeah. arrogance, but snobbery that we shouldn't take Wickham's manager and the fact that they've not played the sexiest football and had to grind and shift in that way. Rovers are obviously looking for a manager to ignite us to the next level. Mm -hmm. Do you think Rovers need to just air caution on maybe being too snobbish against someone like Gareth Ainsworth, particularly if you say that he's going to do that off the field stuff that we don't have? Yeah, I think yeah, it, it would be quite easy to to turn your nose up at him, and I do do think he would do a good job. But again, there are there are cons to every manager as, as there are pros, and I think yeah, you know, what Gareth Ainsworth has done at, at Wickham, he's done with a budget that suits him. He's not been tested at any other club because his only managerial job has been with Wickham. So if we went to a, a Blackburn where there's a broader variety of players who can play different ways, he'll. He, he might be one of those managers who can get the best out of him. But unfortunately, we don't have a large data pool of clubs where he's had the chance to try different things. Might be a success, but as you say, he can come in and do all that stuff off the field that there's going to be a massive gap that Daniel Farker would not be able to do. I think the only thing is, you know, does he fit the model that Blackburn are trying to go go this season, what Mowbray's tried to imprint? Last season, he gave the lowest amount of minutes to under 23s. It's not hmm. exactly telling me that he's he's bringing through uh, younger players. But then again, Wickham don't have an academy, for example. Yeah, so little air of caution there, because certainly, you know, the under-23s and, and the youth and, and the academy that's brilliant at Rovers, you know, we're going to be relying on that for, for many years. So just a little uh, of a caution there on the local legend that is Gareth Ainsworth. So again, if I'm just pushing you for, your, uh, for an answer, if Rovers were to make this appointment, good fit or not? I think it is a good fit for for different reasons as to why Fark would be a good fit. Um, I think the point of him being able to come in and 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 control the club more than what Farker would be able to do, I think, does make it a good appointment. Um, but there are obviously there are obvious caveats like the style of football, minutes to youngsters, and whether or not he can replicate the same job he's done at Wickham at another club. I think the style of football thing will be the big one for mm. Rovers fans. I think we accepted low possession this season because we were scoring goals and we were mm. exciting in that first half of the season. Obviously, when the goals dried up and possession was still low and games were tight and they were nil-nil, yeah. that's when it started to change <clears> for fans. So um, maybe it won't be enough of a change for Rovers fans. So um, that's Ainsworth and Farker, who are certainly the biggest favourites on the list. We will come to Damian Johnson a bit later, but... The next man I want to ask you about, um, Justin, is is Philip Koku. So um, I think I'm right in saying that both you and Ryan both support Derby or 
certainly have an allegiance to Derby. So, um, you know, Philip Koku is someone who I'm really interested in, in getting your opinion on. He obviously came with great credentials mm-hmm. um, to Derby. Brilliant player for Holland and and the caps that he got for them uh, for many years. Um, and then obviously he did win trophies in, in the Eredivisie in, mm-hmm. in Holland. So did come with some great credentials. Didn't work out for him at Derby. Um, Rovers winning 4-0, I believe, at Pride Park under his managerial ship as well. So was he really that bad? Or do you think he was just caught in the beginning of the end of Derby with obviously their current plight? I think you've nailed it. He was he was caught in the beginning of the end of of the Mel Morris era. Um, I'm not really sure why he was appointed if Mel Morris knew he wasn't going to put money into the club because Philip Koku is a type of manager he needed he needed players to play his system. Um, he was trying to do it with a Frank Lampard squad. It just wasn't going to happen, um, and it's a massive shame because I think Philip Koku for Derby was the right man at the wrong time. Because you look at what he's done with the youth players. Max Bird, Louis Sibley, um, Lee Buchanan, Jason Knight, they all came through under under Philip Koku. They all got their chance under Philip Koku. Um, and I think last season, um, it just it just went pear-shaped so quickly. I, I've never seen a, a worse performance than that, the the one you mentioned, the 4-0 defeat. I'm a season ticket holder of Derby, um, and that was generally one of the worst performances I've, I've seen Derby put out. Um <laughs> There are there are big caveats for Philip Koku, but I think he can come in and he can, I think he can do a good job with the right um, with the right things in place. And I think Blackburn are better placed going forwards than Derby were when he came in. Um, you look at the players that had to be replaced when he when he did join um, Mason Mount, Harry Wilson, and Fikayo Tamori, the three loanees. They they were they were irreplaceable, um, and they were they were replaced with Matt Clark, who did a good job, um, Jamie Patterson, and Kieran Dow. It's not really going to work. Um, and then, obviously, going into last season, he lost Jaden Bogle and Max Lowe. He lost Chris Martin and Tom Huddleston as well and was left with kids, um, which is why we had to sign Colin because Ian Richards did a good job, but not enough, unfortunately. So, yeah, it, the rug was pulled from under his feet so quickly. And I, I do feel for him and I really, really like him. Very good guy. It just didn't work out in that second season. And I'm not saying this from any kind of knowledge of Dutch football, so I'm just going to talk out loud a bit. I think I'm right in saying that a traditional model in Holland is that kind of technical director, Mm -hmm. head of recruitment, someone in that type of role in Dutch clubs. So I don't know what the setup was at Derby when Koku was there, (laughs) but could you see Koku maybe bringing someone along who he trusts to operate in a role like we were talking about with Stuart Weber earlier? It could do. It didn't happen at Derby, um, but there may have been restrictions behind the scenes. I know, the, you know, you just look at Derby's recruitment over the last five years. It's terrible. It clearly wasn't any thought behind it. Um, uh, and it was never going to change under Philip Koku. I think he tried to change it um, in, in his way or with his influence, but it just didn't, he just didn't have enough time to do it. Um, I think it would, he would be better suited to someone of a technical director or director of football working with him or a head of recruitment working with him to identify the right players to find, uh, to fit his system. Because I think that's what he needs to really thrive. He needs players to fit his system. But he's already got, if he does go to Blackburn, he's already got more there than what he did at Derby. Hmm. This is an interesting one, Philip Koku, because his name came out of nowhere and hence why he's moved in the market. So, you know, if I just bring back up the graphic that we had, you know, when Joe and the others did the stream on Monday night, he was Mm -hmm. 25 to one. You know, he's come down to six to one now. So some people are fancying him. I think I'm warming more and more to him, actually, because I think recency bias is Mm -hmm. probably a play here. Obviously, someone like Farker, who's recently got promoted out of the championship, I'm licking my lips at that, as loads of other Rovers fans are. Koku in England is obviously being remembered for his time at Derby when it didn't go very well. But you've obviously articulated some very good reasons why it did go wrong. So, yeah, with the right structure, with the right things in place, maybe Koku could be a success. And maybe I'm warming to Koku a little bit more. I'll probably just do a little bit more research into him. But from your perspective, Justin, um, good fit or not, if he was to come? Yeah, I think it. I think it would be a good fit. Um, he's, he's certainly more possession based than he is um, sort of direct pressing, um, and it can be difficult to watch at times. But again, it does it does come with caveats um, with that derby spell. Um, Dutch the Dutch style of football again can be quite conservative, but I think it it, it, it does work. 
Um, and, and I think Philip, Philip Cocky can can bring the best out of Blackburn. And as I say, brings through youngsters. Um, he improves players. You look at his record at PSV. Um, Herving Lozano is, is an example of that. Um, uh, yeah, I think it would be a good fit. But again, just if he comes with the right backroom team uh, upstairs, I think, yeah, it, it would be a good appointment. And that there is the million dollar question, which I think most Rovers fans <laughs> are not trusting our owners to get right. So, um, yeah, hopefully we do something like that and book the trend so far. But I think most fans are, are not expecting that type of logical off the field stuff, I'm afraid. So we will see. Um, so I'm going to ask you about one more manager, Justin, before we go a bit free for all on the list. So Rob Edwards is is the other one who we're going to focus on. So we're going to jump down the list a little bit past some of the 10 to 1 shots. So Rob Edwards, um, I've put Roy Keane up. That's not even Rob <laughs> Edwards. There you go. Rob Edwards, not Roy Keane, currently 12 to 1. Um, I must say I've not really followed League 2 that closely this season and I might well be putting you on the spot a little bit because I'm guessing <laughs> you've not done it too much either. But automatic promotion with Forest Green Rovers this season could still win the league as well. Um, manager of the season in that division as well. So certainly made a really good impression. Um, I'm struggling though to recall recently managers that have been plucked down from lower in the pyramid and then succeeding. So Russell Martin's one that comes to mind. He obviously struggled at the start of this season with mm -hmm. Swansea. Dean Smith, maybe, did a good job after Walsall at Aston Villa. Um, but Edwards is certainly a young and hungry manager. So I guess a couple of questions for you, Justin. You know, Can you think of any other managers that have done well making that jump from League 2 and League 1 into the Championship? And, and what's your views on someone like Edwards, who obviously is a young, hungry and could be successful manager at League 2 level? Yeah, I'm trying to think of um, some examples. I think um, obviously Ryan Lowe went from Plymouth this season to Preston is is a good example, and he's he's gone through the motions a little bit. Um, I think you look at Neil Critchley at Blackpool, how he's adapted coming mm. from League One with Blackpool into the Championship. He's done a very good job, and it's the same with Mark Robbins as well with Coventry. Um, but there aren't too many examples. Again, Grant McCann has made that divide. He obviously went from um, Doncaster to to Hull went pear-shaped after a while um but he's he's now showing that at Peterborough he is a good manager or he, he can he can get a team playing football anyway but I think it has become a lot rarer than it um than it has been um in terms of plucking players from League Two and in and, and League One but I think with Rob Edwards you do have a young hungry manager there who's who's determined to um to uh, well climb up the footballing ladder um I think I think that's that's a really important thing, and he's he's done that with Forest Green Rovers, who don't have the they have a good budget. They don't have the biggest budget. You know, they've got to compete with the likes of Salford. Um, I've forgotten the other team now. It's Salford, essentially, they're, they're, they're the example. Um, but they are competing te competing with teams who have bigger budgets than them, and he's he's managed to wipe the floor. And you look at certain players like Jamal Jamil Met and Matty Stevens, who have scored a bundle of goals. Kane Wilson. Very highly rated with with the numbers he's posted this season. He's been linked with a lot of championship clubs, and I don't think that's down to you know just playing him in the right position. It's down to good coaching and good management, mm -hmm. um, which is a very good place to be, especially in your first season, because there are managers that have gone into clubs and it's taken them time to get going. Whereas Rob Edwards has been able to do it in his first season, where other managers have failed at Forest Green Rovers as well. Mm. I think someone like Rob Edwards, I think if you can say and do the right things, <clears throat> particularly in your interviews and off the pitch and all of that, I think you can buy yourself a bit of time because I'm yeah. always drawn to the way that someone like Steve Cooper talks, for example. I just love what he's done at Nottingham Forest, the connection he's done with the fans. It feels like he's got mm -hmm. a plan. He talks really clearly. And given the evidence we've just presented there, you know, probably not expecting Rob Edwards to come in and get, then get Rovers promoted. We might need to be patient. It might need to be a one, two, three year plan or whatever. And as I say, I think Rob Edwards coming in young, hungry with that ambition. If he says the right things off the pitch, I think Rovers fans would give him time, even if the results yeah. don't quite go well. You know, as I say, Russell Martin struggled this mm -hmm. season, but I've got mm -hmm. no doubt Swansea fans could see progression towards something where they are now, yeah. where they're finishing the season pretty strongly and probably expect to start next season pretty strongly as well. So, yeah, um, yeah someone like Rob Edwards is intriguing. Is is that where you're at? Certainly intriguing. Um, I think there, there are two ways it can go. If you look at Ryan Lowe, good example, went to Plymouth in League Two, got them promoted, um, consolidated in League One, then took a... Um, the, uh, 
he pro- they, they progress into a team that is ready to compete in the playoffs. Again, with teams who have um, much bigger budgets than them. And he obviously set the foundations for Steven Schumacher to to build upon before he went to Preston. Nathan Jones went to Luton in League Two, climbed up the ladder. Um, there are they're, they're, they're ways that it can you know, it can go well. But then there are other examples like Richie, Richie Wellens went to Swindon, got promoted. Um, and then uh, Swindon were relegated, he left. And then his, his career fell down a, a, the ladder a little bit. So I do think with these managers, you need to give them time because especially Rob Edwards, first season, learning on the job. Um, so I, again, comes with caveats. But I think if you do get a young, hungry manager and who's desperate to to impress, can go well. But one example I'd give you is Paul Lynch. And <laughs> we know all about him. <laughs> exactly. Can go wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Enough said about him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just good fit for Rovers or are you a bit half and half on that one? What's your... Yeah, I think it's just the inexperience. I'm a bit half and half. Obviously, the, the candidates we've we've been talking about, Ainsworth, Koku and Farco, the, the years they've got on um, on Edwards is, 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 is remarkable, really. Um, but it just goes to show what good a job he's doing and what trajectory Forest Green Rovers could be on with him in. So if you want to get him now, then I think making the move now to get him would be would be the right thing to do. A bit like Russell Martin with MK Dons and, and Swansea. Definitely. So that's the first four that we've done. So we're going to have uh, a little bit of fun with this now, Justin, and you can bring anyone you want into this discussion. You can discuss one, two or three of them. I'm just going to read. I'm not saying you have to focus on these names. <laughs> but I'm just going to read some of the championship merry-go-round and chances and usual suspects that we've got down the list just to show Rovers fans who's on the list. You know, there's Mark Warburton on there, Slavin Bilic, Alex Neal, Carlos Carvajal, Chris Hewton. Uh, who else? We got Carl Robinson, Simon Grayson. Um, we're going down into thirty-three to one now. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, Jonathan Woodgate, Nigel Adkins, <laughs> Ollie, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. Ollie's at the wheel. Do we fancy Gosh. that one? <laughs> wow. And then you're getting into <clears throat> some seriously stupid territory with Marcelo Bielsa and Arsene Wenger down at. <laughs> so the list is varied, uh, and I think off air before we did this, Justin, you said, "Yeah, it's." <laughs> Not the greatest of lists, but is there anyone we've not spoken about yet who you think might be a good fit or you just want to, you know, make a case for? Yeah, if I was to be super ambitious, um, I I would, I, I mentioned, obviously off air, I mentioned David Wagner, he's available. Um, I think what he, you know, you saw what he, trans- he did with Huddersfield, transformed them from a mid-table, lower mid-table, fighting relegation into a um, a playoff chasing team, a promotion winning team. Went went slightly wrong, but I think that's down to recruitment rather than him. Um, I think, again, he would be a good fit. And he's at a point in his career where it's it's reputation repair time. Um, you know, a fairly underwhelming spell with Schalke. I think he saw them relegated or set the path of them to be to be to be relegated from the Bundesliga and then went to young boys in Switzerland where you know they're one or two teams that are competing at the top and um you know ultimately that's his job I think in March. I just think David Wagner might be worth a shout. Certainly would be worth a conversation upstairs if I was if I was in the Blackburn hier- uh, hierarchy. Um another case I'd make is is Neil Critchley. I think again if I was to be very ambitious, um Neil Critchley would be the manager if I'm the chairman of any club in the championship, Neil Critchley would be in my shortlist, no question. Um, I, I mentioned what he did with Blackpool in, in such a short space of time and a, on a very small budget. Um, the way they've recruited, not necessarily the, the model that Blackburn need with some coaches like Daniel Farker and Philip Koku. He can come in and manage, he can bring players through. He's got experience with the Liverpool under 23, so he's got relationships and links to other clubs as well, which will benefit Blackburn. I think that would be a no-brainer. So that there are two there that would um, that would in, that would be interesting. And another name you mentioned was Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, actually, which which sparked an interest um, on the odds list. I think he's obviously done a good job at Burton. Play a decent style of football as well, Dutch style of football to some extent. Had a bad spell at QPR, repairing his reputation out at Burton again on a small budget. Well, Critchley and uh, Wagner are not on the Skybet list, mm-hmm. so you might be able to get yourself some good odds on that, Justin, if you wanted to tweet them and uh, and get those added. <laughs> Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank is there um, at 33 to 1. Um, before we move on to just a couple of other candidates that I want to focus on in detail, there are some names on here which it would represent their first job 
Uh, and we'll talk about that with Damian Johnson shortly. But names such as Jason Wilcox, who used to play for Rovers, Michael Carrick, Duncan Ferguson. Um, you know, these are going to be managers going for their first first team appointment. Hmm. Do you think that would be too risky for Rovers at this point in time with what we've had and where we find ourselves? I don't think so, because I think they can come in and they can, whoever whoever it would be, and they're coming into their first job, they've got the opportunity to stamp their, their take on things. And because Blackburn were in a bit of a quandary under Mowbray with the style of play, whether it be possession or direct, um, again, I think there's a, a good a good squad there to work with. Um, it's obviously fluid and flexible because they've shown that they can play with different styles of play. Um, they're backed by a good academy as well. So there's that opportunity to bring players through. So I think it would it would be a good job. But again, they'll just need time. They'll need patience mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and low expectations. Because I think, again, being a Derby fan, Frank Lampard came in. I'm not a massive fan of Frank Lampard by any means. But Derby fans gave him time, gave him patience, got behind him. And it was his first job, first full-time job. And it's the same now with Wayne Rooney. Um, so there are obviously some hesitations with it, but it can go it can go well, it can also go wrong as well. Time is going to be a huge thing with all of this, as I say. Um, you know, we, we've had our appetite whetted for the playoffs this season. It came <laughs> out of nowhere. I think we're all yeah. craving it again now when we want to get this appointment right. And, you know what followed Gary Boyer um, a few years ago with Paul Lambert and then Owen Coyle, we got it wrong. And those managers ultimately didn't get the time. So time is going to be a big thing here. Mm-hmm. And this appointment has to be right to get the fans on board so that the manager gets time. And then we can obviously start that building process. Exactly. again. So Fascinating. Um, before we finish then, Justin, I'm just going to ask you about three managers now. So um, I'll start off with the naughty candidate. Uh, Sean Dyche. <laughs> now, his odds have reduced a lot and his name has really disappeared from the social media activity that I've seen. But when Dyche left Burnley and then when it came out that Mowbray was going to leave, Sean Dyche's name was being pushed around a lot. And this is obviously <laughs> going to cause, you know, comment locally. It's obviously well documented, the bitter rivalry between Blackburn and Burnley. But Parking that rivalry to one side, you know, this man knows how to get a team promoted. He's done it twice with Burnley. He can build the club. Um, I love the way that he talks. You know, when I said about Mm -hmm. Steve Cooper earlier, I think the unwritten thing that Blackburn Rovers fans will tell you (laughs) is whilst he was manager with Burnley, we never told anyone that actually we really like Sean Dyche because he speaks Mm -hmm. so well and he's a great, honest manager and just what football needs. So Sean Dyche, could you see him doing a good job at, at Rovers? I could see him doing a good job at any club. And again, when he took over Burnley, um, I think they were in a bit of a, uh, an in-between stage. Obviously, Eddie Howe just just gone back to Bournemouth. Um, and it was a bit of a, a bit of a strange appointment. It turned out to be absolutely perfect. And again, on a small budget, um, he's he's improved players. with Danny Ings when he was at Burnley. Um, yeah, there, there were players there that... They, they shouldn't be Premier League players, but he's turned them into Premier League players, uh, which is absolutely incredible. And it speaks of his man management. Um, but I think he'd be perfect for for Blackburn um, in a, in a footballing sense, whether a rivalry might come in and impact um, people's perceptions. But I don't think it would because of how successful he's been. It would just mean he's under a lot more pressure than other managers, though. I think so. And I think you're absolutely right with what you've said. I think the fact that Rovers fans, whether they want to admit it or not, (laughs) ultimately respect the job that he did at Burnley is ultimately why this name has actually got some legs on social media. People would actually respect this decision and respect this choice Mm -hmm. because they respect the job that he did at Burnley. But I think it's unlikely now. Um, He's tumbled down to 33 to 1. I think it would be really unlikely. Um, More knowledgeable Rovers fans than me will tell me whether it's ever happened before. Managers transfer in between Burnley and Blackburn Um, directly. I know that Owen Coyle's (laughs) both in in separate spells, but going from one to the other, I'm not sure. Someone will have to tell me the history, but it would be an incredible appointment for many reasons if it happened. But... um, I think it's unlikely at this stage, but one which might be a bit more likely. And again, I'm going to be drawing onto your Derby knowledge with this one, Justin, is Wayne Rooney. Now, I don't know what the future holds for Wayne Rooney um, in League One with Derby and everything that's going on at your club. Um, But Rooney is a manager who I've just got the utmost, utmost respect for. You know, we've spoken about managers in their first job about five minutes ago. 
Hmm. What a first job Wayne Rooney did, you know, desperately damning situation for him to take hold of. But again, if I'm going off the things that I value and respect in a manager, when he stood outside your training ground and did all of that stuff when you were relegated, that's hmm. the type of stuff that I love out of my manager. So Wayne Rooney at Rovers with the circumstances we have, young squad, players out of contract, disappointment of this season. Could someone like him do a good job at Rovers? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think he's got more tools at Blackburn than he does at Derby. Um, you've got a working centre forward, for example, who's got more than 20 games under his belt. Um, but yeah, I think Wayne Rooney is a type of manager who can, who can go into a club or he's shown that he's a type of manager who can go into a club and just work with what's there. Um, and I don't think there are many managers like that. You look at Neil Warnock, he's probably one of those managers that falls into that category and how successful he's been at at championship level um but yeah i don't think you can i think the only thing you can sort of question about wayne rooney is 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 can he is can he do it with any sort of budget because of what derby have had to go through this season there's that element in in my mind as a supporter and other derby fan supporters is if derby didn't have a points deduction and they just had the squad they had would they have shown the same fight mm. that they have done um which ultimately is what's got derby through the season is is that that push to want to bridge the gap and prove people wrong fell short, but admirable, admirable in, in, in from an outside perspective. So there are, there are question marks there, but I think from a criteria perspective <laughs> works with limited budget, no budget and brings players through. It's, it's um, a chairman's dream, I think, but I think his next job, he'll want to, he'll want to take a club forward. He won't want to go into a, a club who, uh, just happy where they are, um, which is why he'll, he'll want to make sure the project is is right for him, whatever yeah. that is. Well, 40 to 1, he's quite low down this list at the moment. So um, unless anyone starts putting money on him and, and backing him, Wayne Rooney appears unlikely. But whilst you're on the show and obviously with the Derby connections, wanted to give Wayne Rooney some airtime and and obviously get your view on that. Absolutely. The, the final manager I want to chat about, um, Justin, is this man, Damian Johnson. Now, we're shooting right back up the odds list for this one, and I've deliberately done this one last. Um, five to one, Damian Johnson, currently third in the runners and riders. Obviously, you might not know too much about him, given he's been you know, pretty much a, a permanent fixture of Rovers under 23s and youth setups for a number of years now after playing for Rovers. Um you know, in the late 2000s, um, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, now, again, we were having this chat just before we recorded this about mm. members of backroom staff stepping up and doing a good job. And we were thinking of names. Um, Carlos Corberan is someone who comes instantly to mind, obviously got Huddersfield into the playoffs this season. He was part of Marcelo Bielsa's backroom staff. Liam Manning, a name on the mm. list. Um you know, he has been part of West Ham's under 23s and then that Manchester City group of clubs that they've got. And then Rob Edwards, who we've spoken about as well. You know, he's been part of Wolves under 23s and, and England under 16s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are managers that have been part of backroom staff setups and, and made that step up. Damien Johnson, obviously, for Rovers, would represent an option which is cheap. The players know him. He's done well with our under 23s, which we're obviously going to have to rely on going forward in the academy. And we've obviously got loads of young players. And crucially, what I was saying to you earlier about time, fans yeah. would back him because of his connection to Rovers. Again, with the caveat, as long as it's not another Henningberg or, or whatever <laughs> situation. So someone like Damian Johnson, you know, the safe choice, I will call it that. Um, what do you think? Internal appointments make me very nervous. Um, I think I think they're an easy appointment to make for club chairman and, and executives because they know them. It's not always the right fit. Frankie McAvoy, Preston, a very good coach in his own right. Alex Neal's right-hand man for a long time. Didn't work out for, for them, um, unfortunately. And there are other managers that come to mind. Jory's still out and Steve Morrison at Cardiff, for example. He's, he's shown that he can... He can it can do something, but we don't know what yet. Um, so I say the same things that I said to Cardiff fans. It's just, yeah, just an air of caution with with internal appointments, but clearly ticks a lot of the right boxes. Um, he obviously can, he knows you under 23s. So in terms of bridging that gap between under 23s and the first team and under 23s that he's worked with that are now in the first team, that's going to help. But 
it's whether or not they are good enough to step up to that level or whether they need to step down to step up. You look at Rob Edwards, for example, who's doing that at Forest Green. Um, and, and Neil Critchley at Blackpool, uh, Nathan Jones, he was Brighton under 23's manager at one point mm-hmm. before he went to um, before he went to Luton. So, yeah, I do think they needed that. I do I do think they need that sort of job to bridge that gap. But again, the jury's out on them. I don't think you can criticise them. I think just, they're the type of appointment that you need to get behind. But they always just make me a bit nervous. Yeah, I, I can see exactly why you'd say that. I mean, if he was appointed our manager tomorrow, he would get my full backing. But, um, you know, I'm with you. I think the appointment that I want, I think where I got to with Rovers is we played like Tony Mowbray. So yeah. Tony Mowbray is just a lovely northern bloke who <laughs> is like your dad, who you you would want to, yeah. to just look after you for the rest of your life. And I think Rovers played like that at times. We didn't have that kind of shit housery if you want to call it that mm-hmm. that kind of championship streak that you need at times the dark arts of the games that kind of stuff that you need and maybe that comes with with young players i want the next manager just to unlock that a bit from the squad i want yeah, someone to absolutely. come in and get them yeah. playing ugly and dirty and i just don't know if damian johnson would do that i think that's what this squad needs next just that kind of streetwise stuff that's the word i'm looking for streetwise mm. championship <laughs> performances so he'd get my back in but I don't think he's going to do that side for some of the reasons yeah. that you said there, you know, that jump from coach to manager. So that's my view on it. Your view, good fit or not? I think it would be a good fit for the likes, you know, chairman and executives know the guy. They 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 can bridge the gap between young players, but it's whether or not they are ready for that role, especially at championship level, especially in a team like Blackburn, who are in a good place to go forward, but they still need quite a lot of work doing to them. So it's whether they've got the experience to do it. And again, like uh, Farker and Koku, have they got that um, support from upstairs? So I, w- I would sit on the fence and just say a lot of question marks there. Indeed. So final bit then, Justin. Um, obviously, I'm a, I referenced it earlier, critical appointment for Rovers. There are mm. so many similarities here when Gary Bowyer left. So Gary Bowyer had his critics and Gary Bowyer had his fans as well when he left Rovers um, in that 14-15 season. Um, different timing, Gary Bowyer left mid-season and Paul Lambert came in, I think it was October, November time, if I remember rightly. But we got the appointments dreadfully wrong after Gary Bowyer. So Paul Lambert didn't even stick around for a full season. At the end of that season that he joined, he was off. And then the owners appointed the worst possible manager um, for me. Even worse than Steve Keane, there I said it, because they had the wool pulled over their eyes with Steve Keane. Owen Coyle, to actually insult the fans with that appointment, was just absolutely dreadful. So we got it really wrong after the stability of Gary Bowyer. So this one has to be right. So I'm going to ask you the question, with the right manager, and that could be over a one, two, three-year time frame, whatever, where could you see us finishing next season or in future seasons? What's your view on Rovers if we get this appointment right? Obviously, there are moving parts to the squad. You know, we might lose Diaz next season and not replace him, for example. So where do you see it with the right manager? If everything stays the same squad-wise now, um, with an exception to one or two players being replaced, um, but if that manager is the right man, I do think Blackburn can finish at least 10th um, and above because I think going into next season there are a lot of teams who are in a similar position to Blackburn but in worse stakes um, than than them Rovers so I do think Blackburn are in a much better shape than others which is going to stand them in good stead because even without the likes of Lenahan I mean they've shown this season that you can cope without those players um, to some extent anyway um, because th- there's been a massive injuries, uh, so you know Rovers have shown that they can cope to to some extent with with those or without those players. So I do think Blackburn can finish in around tenth and above. It's just whether that 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 man can be put in charge, that manager can be put in charge um, early. It's got to be done early. I think that's the key thing is getting it done early because yeah, season starts in July, preseason will start end of June. Not a lot of time there to to get plans in place, get preseason going and. Yeah, and, and, and getting the season up and running. Totally agree with the earliness needed, more so with the World Cup, as you referenced. And I just look at someone like Luton, vividly remember them getting their business done early. They got all yeah. those transfers in, they were done. They weren't messing about later on in the transfer window. And look where they are now, chance of playoffs going into the final day. So you're right, early, we can't be missing the boat. 
some of these free agents as well. We might just convince a really good couple of free agents <laughs> to come to us. You know, someone like Jed Wallace, for example, yeah. with the right manager might go, yeah, actually, I fancy Blackburn, you know. So manager is important. We could pick up some really good sign-ins with that. So early, absolutely. And I think I've spoken to a couple of the Rovers chat lads an early appointment, you know, as soon as we possibly can after the Birmingham game on Saturday, an early appointment of Daniel Farker, you know, a week or so after that Birmingham game, I think the fans will just explode. Absolutely. An early appointment of a manager who fans rate, again, I think the fans would get excited and explode. Mm -hmm. If this drags on, oh God, I dread to think what <laughs> happened with season ticket sales and, and all of that type of stuff. So, um, Definitely. We're giving it a good airing on this channel. So Rovers fans, let us know what you think in the comments box. Let us know what you think about Justin's reflections. I've really enjoyed getting Justin's views. You know, he's got eyes and ears to all championship clubs um, across that second tier podcast. So delighted to have Justin's views on the channel tonight. And Justin, for those people that don't know what the second tier podcast is, obviously you annoyed every Blackburn fan this <laughs> season. Uh, genuinely, just let us know what you and Ryan do on your on your pod and, and where they can find you. Yeah, anything championship. We're we're at uh, we're at second tier pod on Twitter, Instagram. We 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 post videos every now and again on our YouTube as well. But obviously, you can find us on any any podcast platform, Apple, Sp uh, Spotify, Android, anything like that. You you'll find us. Type in second tier pod, and we'll be there bashing your ears with uh, I wouldn't say controversial views, but honest <laughs> opinions. I think would be the right way to say. Oh, it's a thankless task. It really is. It, it really is. I, I really enjoy your pod for the record. And, you know, Ryan in particular can bask in the glory that he got it right. So, um, and that's no consolation to us. But, you know, football is all about opinions and you put yours out there. So, yeah, go and check it out, Rovers fans, if you haven't. It's a great pod. I listen to it. It's it's really good stuff and good to get that snapshot of what's going on across the championship. So thanks, Justin, for giving up your time and, and giving yeah, your insight. Thank you, mate. And Rovers fans, as I say, please get your comments in that comments box. Any of the people that we've spoken about tonight, anyone that we've not spoken about, drop it into that comments box. We'll keep having these discussions on the channel as and when things are fed to us. You know, if rumours start becoming more solid or nothing happens, you know, we will get all of that covered on the Rovers chat channel. And the only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button hit that bell icon so that you know when we've gone live or dropped a new video. And please give this video a like for us. Justin, I'll say goodbye to you, mate. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Rovers fans, we'll see you soon. Come on, you. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases, and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods, including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.